Hello to everybody. Uh, my name is Jean-Yves Bezio. I am professor of philosophy at the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, a researcher, member of the Academy of the Brazilian Academy of Philosophy, and uh, I am uh, work promoting logic in the world in all its aspects. What does it mean? Uh, promoting logic. Well, I am giving class logic. I'm giving some lectures, publishing some papers, writing some books and journals. I am editor, in particular, I am editor of the journal Logic Universalis, and also organizing events about the aspects of logic. So let's me explain what, uh, how I understand uh, the topic logic. Well, logic uh, is at the same time reasoning and the science of reasoning. We are using the same word as in the case of history when uh, we use uh, the word history to speak about the science of the past events, which also are called history. That's interesting. Then, uh, how to investigate uh, what reasoning is? I think it's important to study uh, the relation between uh, reasoning, thought, language, and reality. But there are different ways to do that. You know, we can do this at the philosophical level, and I think this is a very important uh, part. And we can also uh, study uh, logical systems. Uh, in the 20th century, many logical systems were created. I mean, during uh, 2000 years, there was basically one uh, logical system, which was the uh, syllogistics of Aristotle. And people were studying this system. Nowadays, there are so many uh, logical systems, it's uh, really impressive. And I have uh, developed a general theory of uh, logical systems that I call universal logic to have a general view of all this system, to unify the diversity of all these logical systems, to understand what they have in common, which ends they are different, what are the basic concepts, logical concepts that we are using, how we can uh, produce some general theorems that can apply to many different kinds of logical system, like a general version of the completeness theorems, and something like that, overthink like that, you know. So that's very important, this part, it's more mathematical. And there is also a third part, which is application of logic. Application and logic, if we consider that logic is reasoning, uh, logic, applies to everything. So uh, it's interesting to see some example. In modern time, the logic of mathematics was developed. That's one, th one thing. But, and also logic was applied to computation. It's also an important point. We can also apply logic to analyze some philosophical problem, but also to many different uh, other fields like arts, linguistics, semiotics, and so on. So it's a very wide, uh, logic is a very wide uh, topic. That's why it is so interesting. Now, today, I will speak also about paradise and the application of logic to paradise. I have developed, uh, this is part of a big project I am developing on logic and religion with my colleague, Ricardo Silvestre. Well, uh, paradise, what is, what is paradise? Right, paradise is something that uh, appears in many uh, different religions. That's, that's interesting because in this project of logic and religion, we are trying to develop a general approach to religion, not limited to uh, only one religion. So paradise, it's a transversal uh, phenomena, if I may say, phenomenon, if I may say. Well, um, paradise, uh, it can be a place, a location that you go 
after death, or one may argue that paradise is already here on Earth, uh, or was here in the past, you know, like in the Christian religion, because Adam and Eve were put outside of the paradise. And um, we can also, uh, there is also the adjective uh, paradisiac, paradisiacal which can be applied to many different uh, things, in particular to states, to what we can call a state, state of mind. Uh, so uh, in some religion, people don't believe there is a place, a location uh, called paradise, but that we can reach, uh, let's say, Nirvana. And uh, Nirvana, it's a kind of uh, paradisiacal state. So it's important to uh, see, we can apply this adjective to this state. And in this case, uh, paradisiacal is uh, related with uh, happiness, goodness, things like that. We have to investigate. So how we can, uh, what, what I'm saying here, uh, what I've said up to now is just some general things about uh, paradise. Now, if we want to develop uh, the investigation of paradise in a more uh, rational way, a more logical way, what can we do? Well, different, we can proceed in different ways. I have been working uh, since uh, many years uh, in the theory of opposition, which is in particular based on the square of opposition. And this idea, the, the basic idea of this uh, theory is to make some distinction between uh, free oppositions, contradiction, contrariety, and sub contrariety, and uh, to apply this, uh, this uh, different opposition to have a better understanding of uh, many different things. So, the theory of opposition has been applied, for example, recently on the theory of colors, also on the theory of music. So it's uh, very interesting. It's part of a structural way of thinking, structural in the sense that, uh, in the sense of social, that uh, we, we, we understand something by its relation with other things, in particular, by its relation with some opposite things. So the, it's not so difficult to do that uh, with, um, in the case of the paradise, because you know most of the time, uh, paradise appear appear simultaneously with an opposite notion, like hell. Uh, so we can have a dichotomy: paradise, hell. And uh, so this is a way to conceive the paradise. So people put some uh, some things in the paradise and put other thing in the in the hell. And then we can see what is on both sides, in which sense this is opposed. And um, this can also apply not only to a location, but also to a state of mind, you know, paradisiacal and something which is uh, really hell, hell, state of mind. For example, craziness, someone may say, well, uh, crazy, craziness is a uh, is the opposite of uh, of paradisiacal, paradisiacal state of mind. Uh, well, so I, I, I was talking about dichotomy, but the theory of opposition is interesting because we can also uh, see some uh, uh, trichotomies and uh, like uh, in the Christian religion, there is uh, paradise, hell, and purgatory. So we have to see also what is this uh, third uh, location, if we if it's better to think about uh, paradise considering uh, the country. And this also can apply uh, to uh, the state of mind, saying that there is, uh, on the one hand, a state of happiness, on the other hand, a state of, uh, let's say, uh, suffering, uh, mental suffering, depression, and things like that. 
And that at the middle, there is something else, which is like uh, maybe the normal state of the people who is so and so. So um, there are a lot of uh, things to investigate, starting with this very simple uh, logical basis. It's logical because the definition, uh, the definition of opposition is based on truth and falsity, on the dichotomy truth and falsity, which uh, generates, uh, this dichotomy generates a trichotomy, uh, which is a contradiction, contrariety and subcontrariety. So that's uh, in my investigation about the logic of paradise, this is my starting point. And this includes, uh, this is uh, basically logical, but this includes this includes uh, a lot of things because, for example, in this work, I am investigating investigating the different pictures, the different painting that people have produced about uh, paradise and hell to see exactly uh, how they contrast and things like that. So uh, it's applied. I am uh, looking at in the details of the different conception of these uh, different uh, concepts around uh, paradise. Uh, I would say it's a very general um, result. It's a, a general result which can be described as a better understanding of uh, what paradise is. Entering in some details, but not just by uh, uh, making an enumeration, let's say of paintings or of writing and things like that, but presenting some uh, chosen uh, example, uh, for example, of painting, of, of uh, photographs, to, to choose such kind of example and to present them in this uh, opposite, uh, using this opposite structure. So th that's the idea. And, you know, when we are uh, investigating uh, something in, uh, in, uh, in philosophy, uh, what's interesting is that we don't know exactly uh, what uh, will be the result because we are discovering uh, some things. That's what is very interesting, that philosophy is creative. Now, uh, it's good to use, uh, to, to do this in different way. I mean, uh, the, uh, the logical way, uh, the theory of opposition is not the only way to do that. But it's an interesting approach. And uh, it's interesting because uh, in some sense, it's, it makes uh, the study easier because it's very, this kind of, of topic like uh, paradise is a very uh, complex uh, topic. So uh, it makes things uh, simple. And uh, we can have a uh, we can get some more concrete uh, results about that, about uh, what paradise is and what paradise is not. To see, for example, the difference between the conception we may have of paradise if we consider paradise in a, just in a dichotomy, or if we consider paradise in a trichotomy. What uh, what is the main difference, uh, and uh, what is the best? Uh, approach. If we, if we can, if we can say there is some best thing, because if we see some different examples uh, of over application of um, of the theory of opposition, we see that in some case, uh, trick, trichotomy is much better than uh, dichotomy. For example, I have been working in the application of theory of opposition to music. In music. Um, we can make the we, we can make the dichotomy between music and noise. So dichotomy, we can consider this as, as a dichotomy. Uh, we can make a trichotomy, which is a music, noise, and silence. And this uh, trichotomy is a trichotomy of uh, contiety in the technical sense of the word which means that the three uh, notions are exclusive. 
two by two. So uh, music is not noise, noise is not music. Music is not silence, silence is not music. And silence is not noise, noise is not silence. So it's a way, uh, when we are doing that, it's a way to have a better understanding of what is music. Uh, someone may agree or not with this uh, triangle of authority. But it's a way to, to try to fix the meaning of uh, these three basic notions, like music, silence, and noise. Because if someone says it's all the same, uh, that noise is also music, that silence is also music, well, what we get? Is it, very is it really interesting? So it's important, I think, in philosophy uh, to make some distinctions. Because the distinction help us to have a better understanding. And uh, to make good distinction is when we are uh, using some logical tools to make these uh, distinctions. It, and the tear of opposition is one tool to make uh, distinctions. Uh, I think it's important to, uh, uh, when doing this kind of work, it's important to have a look at everything. Uh, in one given religion, like for example, in uh, Christian religion, but also uh, to compare, uh, to use this uh, investigation to compare the different uh, religions. The fact that in some religion, uh, the paradise, for example, is not uh, a place, but a state of mind. And what's interesting about this theory of opposition is that it applies, can applies it just to both. So uh, if we make a trichotomy, a trichotomy, if we, are, if, you, if we argue that there is a trichotomy, we can argue that, we can argue that this trichotomy applies both to a paradise of the place or to paradise of the state of mind. And, um, to use uh, a logical theory like uh, the chair of opposition, it's like a compass. Because, you know, if you don't have any compass, you, is, you can spend days, months, years uh, studying different uh, notion of paradise in different religions, and you will get lost. Now, if you have a, a compass, you will look at this, uh, at all these aspects of paradise, on using special perspective. So it, it will help you. It will, be very, it will be very helpful to study uh, the different conception, conceptions of paradise. So thank you very much for this uh, interview. And I uh, hope to see you later to speak about, uh, again, about paradise or uh, about another topic.